Norway is building the biggest roadway project in history, and that too a floating car-free highway. That is so incredible and makes people wonder how it will be beneficial. So, do you want to know about it? If so, keep watching the video till the end and make sure to subscribe for more such videos. Here we begin. Let me tell you first that this $47 billion revamped road network is set to alter travel within the nation, but it's being rightfully called the world's first ever floating highway. So, have you heard about it? Well, I have covered every detail about it so make sure you watch it till the end. Norway's western coast is known to be the home to a few of the most stunning geographies on Earth. This region has been engraved by glaciers throughout the periods, and let me tell you that few of these regions stretch for 200 kilometers inland. So Norway's billion-dollar luxury highway is floating as if it were in a fantasy. So, who is the main supervising body? The Norwegian Public Roads Administration is the contractor for this undertaking. First, let me tell you that the highway will run through six nations in the cities of Stavanger, Alicent, Bergen, and Molde. The total journey time is nearly 21 hours, and road users have to utilize seven ferry connections. An endless E39 highway that is available 24-7 with fixed connections between islands in the mainland will make the western coast more available for people who colonize the coast and for tourists and the transportation of goods. This massive project will be of great help but has some risks too. And for these, many types of research are still going on. We will discuss it later, but do you know about its features? Let's discuss it more. First, the submerged roadway is crucially a set of concrete tubes which are immersed about 100 feet below the water surface. This assists in cutting the Christian Sand Trondheim trip time almost in half. Not only this, it minimizes the environmental consequences on the region. The experts explain that the floating tunnel notion is particularly fitted for deep fjords encircled by steep mountains. By these, we mean that these features make it impossible to construct bridges or drill tunnels. So what is necessary when you construct bridges? Let's hear what Niels Erik Anders Ronquist, a professor of structural engineering at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology said about it. With bridges that span long distances, you need arches and suspensions at certain points. But for a submerged floating tunnel, if you do it correct and balance the weight of the structure with the buoyancy of the structure, it can go forever. Let's hear now what Ariana Menoretti, the chief engineer of the Norwegian Public Roads Administration, said about it. Though the floating tunnel is buoyant, it isn't floating. Instead, the tubes would be stabilized by cables tethered to the seabed or by pontoons floating on the surface at roughly 800 foot intervals. With most of the hardware far below the surface, the tunnel wouldn't interfere with the movements of ships and boats, and even submarines. Just like the traditional tunnels, the floating tunnel will also have escape routes that drivers could take to return to the ground in case of a crisis. And Minoretti explained introductory exploration contemplating the proposed tunnel's safety has been conforting. Let's hear what Ronquist said about this matter. We have done simulations for big explosions in the tunnel. We've checked for impacts of submarines. We covered scenarios where a trawler might hook onto the tunnel. And we even considered if a ship might be sinking at the surface and hit the tunnel on the way down. I would say things are under control. It's a very robust structure. But this view is not the same as others. For instance, Michael Mooney, a civil and environmental engineering professor at the Colorado School of Mines, believed that the complicated fraction of constructing and building a first-of-its-kind large configuration would predict all the apparent hiccups. Let's hear what he said about it. You want to make sure you think of all the potential load scenarios or things like a wave motion. The big challenge is recognizing where all the issues are and not being surprised by something. A professor of civil and environmental engineering at the University of Idaho said that, at the end of the day, the engineering community tends to be on the conservative side. But with novel ideas, somebody has to sort of stick their neck out to say, we think this is the best solution even though it's unproven elsewhere. So what would it look like? The floating underwater tunnel would comprise two 1,220-meter-long concrete tubes, immersed 20 meters below the surface of the Norwegian Sea. As you are already aware that no floating underwater tunnel like this has ever been created before, a British document for an identical structure dates back around 100 years. 
Underwater tunnels could be put in spots across the fjords from Kristiansand in the south of Norway to Trondheim in the north. The experience would be comparable for drivers underwater to being in any other tunnel. Well, the tunnels would join the bedrock which will be beneath the fjord on each side. The submerged tubes would be restrained either by being connected to floating pontoons on the ground of the sea or by cables connected to the sea floor. Broad gaps between the pontoons would allow ferries to pass through. Another alternative indicated by the NPRA is to incorporate an underwater tunnel with a bridge. This explanation is reminiscent of the Orison which pertains to the Danish capital of Copenhagen to Malmo, the Swedish capital. Furthermore, the NPRA is contemplating establishing a 3,700 meter long suspension bridge, which would be three times the size of San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge and double the recent world record for a bridge's length. Let me tell you that the towers on each end of this world record breaking suspension bridge would exist at 450 meters tall, which is around 150 meters taller than the Eiffel Tower. The first recommended intersection is for Sonia Ford, which connects Opedal with Lavik. By 2035, the crossings are expected to be inaugurated between several of the nation's fjords. This is according to Wired. As I already told you, the first of its kind configuration will encompass two 1,200 meter long structures carved with concrete tubes, floating up to 30 meters and 100 feet below the ground. These tubes will be assisted by pontoons on the ground and kept strong by attaching trusses. For additional stability, the building might be locked to the bedrock as well. While on the ground, there would be broad gaps between the pontoons to enable ferries and even cruise ships to travel through it. The first floating underwater tunnel will attach a pedal and lavic, connecting through the 1,300 meters deep, 1,000 meters wide Sonia Fjord. Are there any risks related to this project? Well, presently, the largest danger to the invention could be outbreaks, fire, and overloading, according to Minaretti. The Norwegian Public Roads Administration, or NPRA, is functioning with the Norwegian University of Science and Technology Center for Advanced Structural Analysis, or CASA to utilize live explosives to examine how tubular concrete configurations conduct when subjected to internal blast burdens. This was clarified by a CASA researcher named Martin Christopherson. The experiments will assist the squad in comprehending what would occur to the tunnel's configuration if, for instance, an automobile carrying hazardous goods erupted inside. Still, outcomes so far show that the water pressure encircling the tunnels would lessen the harm from explosions. There is research going on to make this project a successful one. The Coastal Highway Route project cooperates with three of the biggest universities in the Nordic region. It has about 50 PhD candidates helping unravel various engineering challenges which are related to this massive project. So, are you wondering when we will be able to witness this massive project? Well, it plans for the floating tunnel to be unwrapped to traffic in 2050. And while it might be the initial configuration of its aspect, it might not be the ultimate. Ronquist announced designers in Italy and China are seeking identical concepts. Now you must be clear that a lot of the ongoing exploration is of attention for the E39 coastal highway route and the road system worldwide. They are working hard to transmit the outcomes of the research so that every fraction of the work they are accomplishing can bestow international understanding and not be wasted. So, that's all for today. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and smash the bell icon to get more uploads like this. Until we meet again, take care.